My name is Anne. This month, for Halloween, we're going to sketch the Star of India. This is a little different from our normal kids' sketch. We're sketching ships, not buildings, but they're still structures. They were still designed with care for a special need and built for people to use, and they're part of a very special history. So let's go back in time. Let's look at the Star of India. She was built in 1863 on the Isle of Man, which is a small island near the United Kingdom. She was one of the first ships built of iron. Before that, most ships were made of wood. That was more than 150 years ago. At that time, Europe and the Isle of Man were full of people and buildings, cities and towns, kind of like what we're used to today in our city. To give you an idea about how long ago this was, at that time, San Diego only had about 700 residents, which is less people in the whole city than in most schools today. Things looked very different then, and traveling around the world, back then that was a lot different too. The Star of India's life as a working ship was full of danger and adventure. Her name was originally the Uturk, and she was a cargo ship, meaning she was built to transport goods around the world. She sailed mostly between Europe and India, which took months. She began her sailing life with two scary trips to India. On her first trip, she suffered a collision. Luckily, she survived, but then there was a mutiny. That's when the sailors rebel against the captain and refuse to obey his orders. On her second trip, she ran into a cyclone, which is a storm with very dangerous winds. She was caught in the Bay of Bengal, just off the coast of India and the sailors had to cut away her top mast to escape the high winds and to get to safety. In 1871, she was sold to a different company, the Shaw Savile Line of London, and for 25 years they used the ship to transport people emigrating from England, Ireland, and Scotland, taking them all the way to New Zealand. This long trip, it was very difficult. It was especially hard on the emigrants cooped up inside the ship. During the long trip, they had to eat foods that could last a long time without refrigeration. So this meant eating mostly hardtack, which is like a very hard bread, and salt junk, which is meat that's been preserved with lots of salt for long trips. The immigrants weren't used to living on a boat. It was very common for them to feel seasick from the movement of the ship and other illnesses were common too. It was a very difficult trip. Some people didn't survive, but they were very tough people and most of them made it through the long journey and they started new lives in New Zealand. Well, the Uterp sailed around the world 21 times. Sometimes this journey took more than a year. Later, she was sold to the Alaskan Packers Association and her name was changed to the Star of India. And that's why we call her that today. She transported salmon from Alaska and she even got trapped in the ice in Alaska. It was very, very tough voyaging. A little iron ship battling through terrible winds, she was described in her log as laboring and rolling in a most distressing manner. Some people say these ships are haunted. What do you think? Let's start sketching and think about it. Let's start sketching the Star of India today using just a pen. Oftentimes I'll start out with a pencil in these tutorials and then switch to pen once we've blocked everything out. But let's try today using just pen. And the reason is that we, we wanna make sure that we get a little character in with our line weights. And if we started with pencil, we might be a little too deliberate with our line weights, but let's have some fun. Going in with pen means we acknowledge that we're probably gonna make a mistake somewhere along the way and it's gonna be okay. It'll be part of the character of the sketch. I'd like us to take a look at what we're going to draw. There's the hull of the ship, which is very horizontal. There are three masts, the main mast, the fore mast, and the mizen there in the rear. And then there's a lot of these horizontals, which are called yards. And then all of those crazy diagonals, which look like spider webs and those have a variety of names. It, they're ropes, but they are 
nautically called sheets, stays, clue lines, bunt lines, and halyards, amongst other things. And then there'll be those uh, three sails that we'll draw in. So, so let's start with the deck. And that is going to be, it's got a little curve to it, but let's just draw it as a horizontal line. And let's go straight across the sheet. I'm going to do it in the lower third of my page. I'll make it about like that. All right. I'm going to find just eyeballing about the halfway point, and I'm going to make a tick mark. And then from that tick mark, I'll draw straight up to near the top of the page. Now let's look at the area in to the left of that line. Can you kind of eyeball halfway point again? And draw a vertical line. And that's called, that line is the foremast, main mast, foremast. Let's do this, this one in the back. So I don't know if you'll notice, but what, what I what I want to do with these sketches, um, with these these sketches and these tutorials, is to help you see things. And when we take a look at this this ship, we might see three vertical masts evenly spaced. But if you look for a moment, you'll notice that these two are a little closer together than that one. And so let's and and, and but that this. Um, the distance between the main mast and that mizen is about the same distance as the mizen to the back of the ship. And the back of the ship is called the aft. So, but it's because these are farther apart than these, we need this line a little longer. So add a little bit extra to your deck. A little bit extra. Now find the halfway point and draw a vertical line up for that mizen. And the mizen and the main mast are not going up quite as, or the mizen and the foremast are not going up quite as high as the main. Oh, but look, it's pretty close up there. And that back one is taller than the front one. The mizen is taller than that foremast. Okay, this looks a little, um, this is pretty simple. What should we draw next? Let's draw the bottom of that hull. In our photo, it's a roadway, but we're gonna use our imagination and pretend the Star of India is out to sea. So draw another horizontal line below the deck of the ship. Mm, it could be about the thickness of your pencil or um, your pen. Is it a, a finger thickness? How far below? I'm, I'm gonna do it about uh, the thickness of the pen. Draw another horizontal line there. It's not as long as the deck. Then I'm gonna do two sort of slanty lines, the fore of the ship and the aft of the ship. It kind of looks like a cartoon of a ship, doesn't it? But once we start adding more detail, it'll make more sense and won't look quite so cartoony. Now, how about this angled piece at the at the bow of the ship. That's called the bow spirit, sprit, bow sprit. Let's do that one there. Some of the other things we see, there's a tiny little enclosure here. That's called the foxel. You know, that's kind of a crazy pronunciation. And in the back, this is called the quarter deck. Looks like it starts a little bit behind the main mast. It's, it's a little taller than the foxel. And then just draw a horizontal line there. There's your quarter deck. And this piece in the back called the poop deck. Kind of hard to see where it starts and stops. Let's just start it there at, at that misel. Okay, misel. Okay, there we have it. Um, looks like it doesn't go all the way to the end. While we're here, why don't we do this line? What's that called? That's called a main boom. Now let's start doing some of these horizontals and they're called yards and the ends of them are yard arms. What's interesting is they're not exactly horizontal, but I'm not gonna worry too much about getting the angle right. But if I wanted to, you see what I just did there, I angle my pen and it kind of tells me about what the different slopes are. 
and it wouldn't hurt for us to do that. Uh, something else to notice is these yards get smaller as they go up. They're kind of like a Christmas tree. Can you see that? So let's start drawing these horizontals. Let's start with this middle one here because it's about halfway up the mast and that's a little easier to find and to eyeball. It's got a little slope to it. Go ahead and draw a line right there in the middle. Not too far out. Looks like on the left side, it's about halfway to the next mast. Okay. And then over here, ooh, it doesn't go very far at all. As a matter of fact, on the left, it goes out farther than the right. I may have, it, I may have drawn mine out way too far. Let's draw the one right below it. Maybe this time we don't go as far. We'll let that be our first oopsie. Then come up about halfway up the mast again, and let's draw this one. He's got a little bit of an angle, and remember, it's sort of Christmas tree-like, so he's going to get smaller as we get up, higher up. And then the next one up near the top like that. And then how about this lower one, this really big one? So it's about halfway between this guy and the deck. It's about halfway um, between the midpoint, so it's about a quarter of the way up. And its angle is not quite as, as it doesn't have quite as much angle as the one up most. Look at how, how close it gets to the other mast though. So go ahead and draw that in. And then on the right hand side, don't go too far with it. How's your Christmas tree look now? <laughs> Looks like a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Let's take this four mast and do its yard, its horizontal, its yards. Do the same thing we did before. Let's find our halfway point. Let's eyeball it. So uh, again on the right, it doesn't go as far as out on the left. Halfway up from there, got another one. Halfway up again, got another one. If you can make your angles change and get a little, a little more angled, the higher up you go, we're good. Coming back down, there's one right below that first one we drew, a little longer on the left. And then how about this guy? He's about halfway down again, a little, little less than half. What's that? On the right-hand side, on the Mizen mast, there's an angled piece called a gaff. Should we draw in our gaff? We've got our main boom. Let's draw the gaff. So it's a little less than halfway up the top, but, but let's compare it to where it starts compared to where some of these yards are on the main mast. It's about equal horizontally with uh, the, this, this center yard. So let's visually find a point across from it, and let's get that the angle of that gaff, like that. It doesn't go too far up. There. Now they're awfully skinny and we'll, we'll come back and we'll add a few more, well, we'll thicken up those lines, but why don't we find the sail, the, the three sails next? Let's start with the, the sail off of the main mast. Look at where it starts and ends. It starts up top, a little bit below that second yard. Pretty sure that's the crow's nest. The crow's nest is not way up top of the mast. It's up here at this point. And the crow's nest was used for lookout and maybe to adjust some of these, um, these ropes. So there's a diagonal line from that point, that crow's nest, down, it looks like, to the base of the foremast. I'd like you, working with your arm and not your knuckles or your fingers, to draw a line, a diagonal line, from that point to that part, freehand and kind of quickly. Now there's a trick to it, um, makes it a little easier, is visualize this dot, get an idea where that is, and connect them. 
Now let's draw this sail, it, the rest of the triangle. Looks like the sail starts just under that, that horizontal arm. So bring it down, not all the way to the deck. And then from the point where that angled line hit that foremast, angle back up. See, and then there's a little rope. I don't know if you can see it. Don't really know the difference, whether it's a rope, a sheet, a stay, a halyard. So I'll just call it a rope, a little rope like that. The front sail, it starts a little bit below that second yard. So make a point there. And look where it ends, way out here on this bowsprit. And we're going to go from that point down, angle down, try to use your arm, draw kind of quickly. If your pen skips, all the better. If it gets a little curvy, that's okay too, because this is a gesture drawing. And um, we're just giving everybody the idea of what's happening. That sail starts from this arm. That's the one, two, three, fourth one down. Make a little line. We're going to make a little triangle there. And its little rope ties back like that. All right. Let's do that third sail. So the top of this sail is just above the gaff. And the bottom goes down to near the main mast. Make that angle. There we go. See, I hit the mast. It doesn't hit the mast. That's okay. Not a problem. There's so many lines. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. Uh, we're not gonna pick on them. So then the back of the sail looks like it's kind of vertical, and the bottom of the sail makes a triangle like that. So we have our three triangular sails, our three masts. The two masts have the five yards. And that back mizen mast just has its gaff and its boom. Should we start thickening in some lines right now? So you'll notice that the masts are thicker near the bottom. Starting with this front one, it gets thicker up to a point between that first yard and the second. Go ahead and make it thicker like that. You can We've got thin pins, and we want to work with a thin pin because we really need those, those ropes to look thin. Make it thick like that. Then from there up to where the sail's attached, it's thinner. And then thinner still up to the very top. Let's do the same thing with the main mast. It's a point between that first yard and the second. Make it sort of thick. Fill it in. All right. Then from here to the crow's nest, it's thinner. It's thick, but it's thinner. Thinner than the bottom, anyway. And then from that point up to the very top, I just make sort of two little lines like that. On the mycin. Let's do the same thing up to that point where the sail starts. See, so the, the lines um, or those sheets that attach, or the sails attached, this is a point that needs to be the strongest because there's a lot of tension. When the wind is blowing on that sail, it's going to be yanking on that mast from that point. And so that's why these are really thick. And then from that point up, two lines. Let's, let's start to thicken some of our horizontals, some of these yards, and, and this main boom is a little bit thicker. The gaff is a little bit thicker. These, these start thicker, and you see that they're a little thicker closer to the mast and they get thinner as they go out. So make some lines like that, they're sort of pointy. Just look with your eye and you know what kind of pen you're using. This one, I'm, remember I made it a little too long, so I'm just going to ignore that. And now's a good time to adjust the lengths of them if they're too short or too long. Same thing for these guys. 
Oh, um, when you do this yard, see how part of it is behind the sail? So we can't see it all. So just stop where you hit the sail on that one. That's about the only place where the yard is hidden by a sail. So if we were actually standing on the on the ship looking straight up that mast, we'd see that the yard um, arms are equal length on either side of the mast. But because of where we're standing, we see more of the left side than we do the right side. All right. And, and just as you keep sketching, you'll develop your drawing and you'll see which, um, if, if all your lines are thick enough, if you need to make any thicker, you can adjust them as you go. What shall we do now? Um, I would like to thicken up the bowsprit just a little. Also, the leading line, the leading sheet on those sails is a thicker line. So go ahead and make it like two lines together. We're sort of building up our sketch. All right, I'm looking like a ship, feeling like a pirate. Let's get some of the curvy lines in the sails because right now it's like they're nothing. And how do we show that there's something in our drawing where we're just using just using lines, we're just using pen. Let's let's start with the sail that's um, on the far right that attaches to the mizen and it and ends at the bottom of the mainmast. Can you see how they're um, they're like little ripples? And and actually they are ripples. The wind is blowing the sail and it's causing ripples in the fabric. So go ahead and draw some curved lines starting from that center almost like where there was a drop of water. And move on out, getting the lines closer as you get to that corner, that triangular corner. It looks like I forgot to tie that sail back. Let's do the same thing for this middle sail. And you see how that's a longer one in the way that the, the breeze is catching the, way, uh, catching the sail and um, creating those sort of waves, ripples. And it helps, if you'll notice, the sun is hitting it differently. You've got some shadows on that sail. So go ahead and make these ripples, if you will, closer together so that you get a little more shadow in there. Now let's do the same for the front one. We've got fewer there but enough to give a hint that the sail's got a little movement in it from the wind. And adjust if you'd like, or leave, leave, um, leave it when, you're, when you feel like you've got enough done. Before we get into all those ropes, I'd like to add a few more details on the hull of the ship itself. Let's add a second line right at the deck. It just has a little edge to it. I'm basically drawing that white line. Now just below it, about a third of the way down, draw a second line. That's that other white line. That is some trim painted white. The rest of the ship is paint, the rest of the hull is painted black. We might decide to, to color that in later, to shade it in later. And this quarter deck has some windows on it. If you'd like, do a line across the quarter deck and you'll see that there's some tiny little squares that are, that are windows into the quarter deck to allow some natural light. All right. If you'd like to add something to the foxhole, maybe a few lines, it's just that it's a little darker. If you were careful, you might see that there's some doors and openings in there. You can see some openings, some windows, so I'd like to get some little squares in there. 
you know where the horizon line is? That's the where the sky and the water come together. It's here about halfway up, about halfway up the hull. In the picture, you may be seeing a line here that's near the very top of that quarter deck, but that's Point Loma beyond. What we want to draw is where the water and the sky meet, and that happens down lower, like I said, about halfway up the hull. And so if you'll add those lines, we will have set our, our sailing ship, we will have set the Star of India to sea. <laughs> Now let's start on, on the spider web, if you will. All these crazy lines, those sheets, the halyards, the stays. How do we begin? It's just a bunch of lines going everywhere, and there's an organized confusion to them. So let's start looking at them. Okay, first of all, there's some that really do look like little spider webs here. And those are called shrouds. There's a shroud on either side of a mast, and it helps to stabilize the mast. But the other thing that they do, because of the way that they're configured, is it gives the sailors who are working on the ship a way to climb up the masts. Well, let's start with the shrouds. Let's start with this first one on the main mast, and it's going from uh, that midpoint. Just draw a couple of angled lines out. And maybe do the same thing on the other side. They're hidden behind this the sail. Looks like um, and then and then just do some little horizontal lines in them. Now try to use a quick line. If you if you spend too much time drawing those horizontal lines, they'll be too dark and they'll look too important. So try to do them as little flicks. Look, they, they're starting to look like spider webs. Looks like there's another one of these shrouds that goes from from this midpoint up to the crow's nest, which makes sense. We need, somebody needs to get up there. So draw your angled lines and your little ladder points. Let's do the same thing for the main, for the foremast. I don't know about you, I did my, that bottom part of my foremast a little thick, but I think when we're done with our drawing, it's not gonna matter. Do some angled lines. There's the shroud. Now there's another shroud on that side. Look how those little horizontals are always horizontal. They're not parallel. I mean, they're not. Um, they don't angle. They 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 go across. It doesn't look like they they angle at all. Another shroud up here. Add them where you see them in the photo. You don't have to add them. If, say, I'm going a little fast, just you can add them after you're finished. Let's do the shrouds back here on the mycin. Same things happening. They don't go out very far, do they? Not very wide. All right, let's start to study where all these ropes are going. Looks like there's a rope connecting end point of every piece of wood to another one. So starting with the main mast, there's one from the top to the arm, there's one from the top to that second uh, yard arm, one from the top to the second yard arm, down to the middle ones, down to the deck. So. Keeping them fast, go ahead and start connecting these lines. And then let's do some of the other side. You'll find that um, my hand just bumped the, the coil on my sketchbook and it made for a funny line. That's okay. They're going from mass to the yard arm. Looks like it's going from this yard arm to that yard arm from the crow's nest out to the yard arm. So start making some, some lines like this. Connect, let's see how the main mast connects to the foremast even, from that point to that point. And the main and the foremast would do the same thing with that sort of Christmas tree effect. And 
and keeping them, keep a real light touch with your arm and your pen, and that'll keep them thinner. That'll help you make your lines really thin. Oh, look, there's one going from the top of the foremast to the outer port of that portion of that jib boom. There we go. And there's actually a couple of them. Look at where they're going from and to. Crazy lines. Try not to go in front of the sail. Mm, I do see a line going in front of the sail, but let's let's try to avoid that. Is it starting to look like the Star of India to you? And you see how there's some going in other directions too. So let's get some of these crazy lines all over the place. And then there's a point near, not at the very top. So at the top of this mizen, the lines go down like that. But there's a point a little bit below the mizen, the very top, that goes off out to the gaff, the end of the gaff. It just looks like it's a single line. And then the gaff to that, that main boom. That flag isn't flying very you can hardly tell it's a flag except for we see the red, white, and blue. If you want to draw something, it's sort of crumpled up. If you want to draw it like that, go ahead. It's just a, it's sort of hanging there. All right, are there, are there other areas where you want to draw some? You fill in the areas where you think you see some, some lines. And then we're about we're about done on on those. Now's a good time to squint a little and to see have you got enough of the lines? Is it is it convincing? Before we do the reflection in the water, let's add a little tonal value to the side to the hull of the ship. You know it's dark, painted black. Let's go ahead and add a little. I'm just going to do some horizontal lines just to give a hint that the color is there. I might just because it's the way I sketch is I might do a little darker front and back. All right, I gave a hint that the hull is darker and that'll help us as we draw um, as we sketch in the, the reflection on the water. So the reflection is a mirror image. What you see up top here, you're going to see reflected down here. Let's, let's start at the front, at the fore of the ship. You see how this angles up? Well, it's going to be reflected, like in a mirror, it's going to go down and out. Make your, start your reflections as dashed lines. Let's do the front, let's do the back. So if it's up about the width of your pen, make it down about the width of your pen. Let's dash in the line of the deck. It's just a dashed line in the water. You got that? You could keep going and dash a little line. That's that bowsprit. How about where the masts are, do a series of dashed lines straight down. They're just dots for now, and then we're going to fill them in. Maybe the sails. Think of them as upside down. All right, for the reflections, it's a series of horizontal wiggly lines like this.
And one thing to think about is th these lines are actually where the water, where there's movement in the water. So part of it is reflection, like in a mirror, and part of it is just where the light is catching the waves. Fill them in like that. You can decide how much and how little reflection there should be. There should always be far less reflection than is actually drawn. So just give a hint, a ghost of what is actually there. Just keep adding your little a squiggly line, break them up, do some here, do some there. The darkest line should be right where the ship, the hull of the ship meets the water. That line you can draw a little darker and maybe a few extra lines like that at, at the water line. You know, it might be kind of fun to, to try to capture some of those little windows, the reflection of the windows there. Few of them over here. Anytime you're ready to be done, you can be done. Squint, squinting turns it into just um, you know, the, the details kind of soften and you can see what stands out. You've got enough standing out. To, to tell the story of what you're seeing with your eyes. even drawn any of these um the yards in the reflections but those are going to be helpful telling us what we're looking at sometimes i draw in seagulls which are pretty simple a little line like that for halloween i want to draw in some bats Maybe add an extra little bump there. So make a seagull, give him an extra little point on his wing. If you want to add some extra shading, there's sometimes, um, just going in one direction with shading, it it's hard to, to the, the pin might catch in a line that you've already drawn, already sketched in. So changing the direction might be a good idea here. Especially because the hull of the ship is a little bit curved, and so make them sort of slightly curved lines or angled lines. And in adding a few more of these lines from a different angle, it helps to make those two white lines punch. And then I'm adding a little darker shadow, a reflection, a little darker reflection there.
Star of India. San Diego. And then add the date that you did your drawing. October 2021. 